So today has been an interesting day. Uh, Freya woke up at four and was awake and ready to take on the world. Crawling around, talking, I tried to get her back to bed. Usually if I sit on the rocking chair and rock her, she'll fall back asleep. Did not happen. So I just put her in her room and I went back to bed and she was good. She just sat and played with all her toys and just waited until we got up. Um, got the kids off to school. I was supposed to go hang out with my friend Laura and her kids. And right as I got Freya dressed and gave her her seizure medicine, she threw up everywhere, all over my room. So then I had to clean the carpets. <laughs> And now Freya is in her room. I'm hoping she's sleeping. I don't hear her moving around in there, so I think she finally went to sleep. Freya will throw up a lot randomly. And I'm not sure. She has pretty severe reflux, so it could be reflux. She's been not sleeping well the last couple days. And yesterday I was giving her kind of a back massage and head massage and she absolutely loved it. And every time I stopped, she'd grab my hand and put it back on her head. So I'm also wondering if she has a migraine. I've been giving her ibuprofen because of that, but I get really bad migraines and throw up. And I started them when I was really little. Um, I think I was five or six the first time I actually like remember having a migraine. And then Jesse and Liam also get them too. So I'm wondering if that's it or if it's the reflux. She hasn't thrown up again and hasn't really shown that she's like, sick in any other way so we're just trying to figure out what's going on <laughs> while also having no idea what's going on if you guys don't know me i'm marcy i have four kids the youngest of whom is freya she has a rare syndrome called cornelia de lang syndrome and i found a really interesting article yesterday that talks about what her or I guess what a typical NIPBL gene is. Uh, Cornelia de Lange syndrome has, I think it's eight genes. It might even be nine. They keep finding new gene mutations that are associated with CDLS. Uh, Freya has the most common gene change on her NIPBL gene, but she is the only person known to have this specific gene change on her NIPBL gene. There are uh, splice sites on your gene that splice proteins together, and her gene changes on one of those splice sites. So the article yesterday, I was reading about the NIPBL gene and what it does in a non-affected human body, and the NIPBL gene makes this protein, I think it was a protein, it makes something called Delangin, which I think is named after Cornelia Delang, uh, the doctor that uh, first, well, one of the first doctors to discover Cornelia Delang syndrome. It is named after her. Anyway, so Delangin is something, I believe a protein, but don't quote me on that, that is involved in something called the cohesion process. Stick with me because I hope this makes sense, you guys. <laughs> and if you are like a biologist or a geneticist and you're watching this and you're like, oh, you're getting this so wrong, please let me know. I love to learn. <laughs> Comment and let me know. Anyway, so the cohesion process helps uh, DNA replication and cell, what do you call that? When cells split. 
I'm sure it has a term and I can't think of it right now. Anyway, so this cohesion complex, did I say process? See, I'm still learning, you guys. Anyway, the Delangan helps cells split. It specifically, if you remember back to high school biology, do you remember when chromosomes copy themselves and they make chromatids, sister chromatids, where they like sit together and they're joined and then when the cell splits, one cell gets a copy of this chromosome and the other cell keeps this copy. That's what it does, the Delangan. And so when you have a mutation on the NIPBL gene, you aren't making as much of this Delangan. And so your cells cannot split, your DNA cannot regenerate as easily. So that's why Freya is so small and developmentally delayed in every development there is. Growth, cognition, physical development, speech, everything. Because her cells aren't making copies of each other as effectively as they should. Did that all make sense? So that's what CDLS is. That specifically is what the NIPBL gene mutation is. There are other, there's like RAD21, uh, SMC, SMC1, A, I always get it. I always want to say A1C and it's not. That's to do with diabetes. <laughs> SMC1A, I believe. Anyway, so I found that very interesting. asleep in there. She needs a good little nap. Last night we were watching a show on YouTube about a person with, I believe it was called pseudoachondroplasia. So she's a little person. She has a physical disability, but no intellectual disability. And the reason we started watching it is because it said she was 30 inches and 18 years old and Freya is 30 inches. So I was like, oh, she's as tall as Freya. That's fun. Let's watch it. And one of my kids said, I wish that Freya had that so that she could talk to us and we could have conversations and she could learn things. And the best advice I've ever gotten as far as my kids go uh, in dealing with Freya's diagnosis is that they will have every emotion that I feel just at different times than me. And it usually comes as they start coming, um, growing up. Because when they're little, like two and three, they kind of accept everything for what it is. But then as they start growing up and being around other people, they start kind of processing these things, right? And I just told that kid, like, mm, I wish we could do those things with Freya too. That's really hard for me too. And just the, the waves of grief that come with, having a child with a disability and for my kids having a sibling with a disability, uh, it never stops. We love Freya. And this is one thing that I wanna get across is like you can have conflicting emotions. We can love Freya and we can love Freya for everything that she is, including the CDLS. We can also wish things were different and learning more about her diagnosis and kind of why things are happening the way they're happening. It's such a tiny, small, little thing. I mean, we have like hundreds of thousands of genes in our body and on this one gene, on this one tiny little splice site, something is a little bit different and it causes all these changes in Freya's body. And it does, make me sad and this all happened in the same night so one of her siblings voicing i 
want to have conversations with Freya and I want her to be able to learn to do things. And finding that out, it was all a lot in one night, right? So I just want to get across that you can, we can have conflicting emotions. We can have the emotion of, I love my kid and I love her for everything that she is. And also be like, I really wish things were different. I really, especially on days like today, I really wish Freya could tell me, mom, my head hurts and I'm going to throw up. Or mom, I'm having some really bad heartburn and I feel like I'm going to throw up because I could have prevented her throwing up in both of those situations with a medication. But because she can't tell me what she's feeling, there's more pain. And I could tell there was pain when she was throwing up. So it's just, it's a very difficult thing and a very difficult thing even for me to like wrap my head around what I'm feeling, let alone explaining it to someone. And anytime I voice how hard this life can be, I always get met with, but she's so great, but you guys are so blessed, but you're such a great family and can handle it, but, 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 when really I just want to be able to voice, like this is hard sometimes, and this is hard for me and it's hard for my kids, and I want people to be like, yeah, it can be hard. I just feel like when I voice these things and I'm met with, but she's great, so like you shouldn't feel like things are hard because she's great. Like two things can coexist at once. And that's what I'm feeling today. I'm feeling love for Freya and love for who she is and love for how amazingly strong-willed and stubborn and loving and great. She's just a great kid. All those qualities are great and also it sucks that she can't just tell me, hey mom, my head hurts, I'm gonna throw up. Hey mom, my, my heartburn's getting real bad. Can we take some for it before I throw up? You know? Or even, hey, sibling, I want to go out and have a good time with you. I want to have fun. Let's go out and do something together. Cause I know she has these feelings and the ability to not communicate those feelings is difficult not only for me, but for all her siblings too. So it's been kind of a weird, grief-filled, hard day. And it's hard for me as a mom to know that my kids are feeling this pain that I felt before, because I know how it feels and I want to take it away. And I know that I can't and that it's gonna be a lifelong process for all of us. Someone woke up from her very long nap. Where do you keep finding beans? Ugh, can I have that bean? Thank y'all. She played with beans like 10 days ago and she keeps like, I swear she stashes them. Anyway, woke up from a very long nap and is feeling a-okay, right? You feeling okay? I did get some uh, ibuprofen in her after she ate, so. We shall see. Oh, yep, go ahead. She's like, all done, mom. I'm out of here. Go ahead. Oh, you wanted me to hold you? Yeah, holding you. So, mystery puking. Who knows? Who knows? I'm gonna go stand in front of this window because when I did before, the light was very nice. What do you think, yeah? You sleepy? Yeah. No kisses. No kisses, you say. What's going on out there? Oh yeah, I did see. <laughs> you got a you got a rubber band all the way up your arm. That's very cool. Yeah, rubber band. Ooh, you be careful with that. Alright, well, thanks for listening to me talk today. I hope you'll come back next time. Freya starts school next week. You gonna go to school next week? So come back to hear how her first day of school is and see what else we're up to. 
quick update. I was vacuuming my room. Freya usually loves the vacuum. She thinks it's hilarious. It makes loud noises. And she started crying really hard when I turned the vacuum on. You can see her. She's like, oh, vacuum. I think she has a headache. I think she does. Because she usually loves loud noises. And she did not love that loud noise. And specifically, she loves the vacuum. So, I think she has a headache. Do you have a headache? Is that what's wrong? Your head hurts. So as soon as that ibuprofen kicks in, the last two nights I've given her ibuprofen because she seemed a little off and she did sleep through the night the last couple nights. So I think the ibuprofen from the uh, night before had worn off probably about four o'clock and that's probably what woke her up. And then I didn't give her any more ibuprofen and it was about nine o'clock that she threw up. So I think you have a little headache, huh? Give you another head massage. You liked that yesterday, huh? Oh yeah. Oh, that feels so good. All right, for real this time. I hope we'll see you next time. Come on back and this girl will be over her headache, I'm sure. <laughs> she likes that head massage. Oh yeah. More? More head massage? Okay. More. Yeah. Right here, mom. Right here. <laughs>